Okay, so if you're trying to find the equation of the elastic curve, um, we I'm just going to start off by drawing a diagram here. Let me just create a new board. Um, so we have uh, y is the displacement here, and then we have a over here, and then the beam is going to be going like this. Okay, so this is length L, and then over here is the wall that it's pinned to, and then this will be B. And then we'll have a full displacement of X at the pinning moment, and then we also have the bending moment, which <clears throat> is signified by uh, um, M, and that's going to be going up like this. And that's in units of um, pounds per foot, and it has to do with the rotation that can be done on the beam. All right, so let's start off by listing our boundary conditions. Um, so with the boundary conditions, there's two, there's two main conditions. There's a condition um, for the pin supports. So I'll just put pin supports. Uh, it's really hard to write on here. Um, and then we also have the boundary conditions for the cantilever supports, which is the built-in material of the wall itself supporting it. Okay. So if we have um, if we have the pin supports, uh, it's going to be such that when X is the full length L. Y is going to be zero because there's gotten there's not going to be any vertical displacement at this point. Okay. And then we also have at X equals L, there's going to be no, there's going to be no uh, change in Y. Um, there's going to be no change in Y because, um, because of the built in supports. So, um, and another reason that is, is because dx will also be much greater than dy, rendering um, al almost no rotation. Okay, so we first calculate the bending moment m, and the bending moment m is going to be negative w naught x times x over 2. And why is it x over 2? It's x over 2 because when you're trying to find um, the, the bending moment um, or any moment, like the moment of inertia, for example, it's going to be in the center of mass of the beam. And that's going to be a distance of x over 2 um, away from the center on both sides, just to kind of draw that out. Um, so we're looking at the center of mass in calculating that. And then this just ends up being negative omega naught x squared over 2. All right. Um, once we have that, we can, I don't know if you derived the equation already um, or you need to show the derivation, but it comes down to EI y uh, double prime is going to be equal to m, which is going to be equal to negative w naught x over 2, x squared over 2. And then we just do double integration. So we have, um, so basically this is just, this is just going to end up being negative w naught over 2. Um, since w naught is constant, you take it outside the integral. And then you're going to have x squared dx. And then eventually what you should have is negative w naught x cubed over 6. And then plus c1 because it's an indefinite integral. And then you integrate again where you get ei y is going to be equal to, and then we basically, we don't take anything out of the integral. 
we have it here, x cubed over six plus c1, and then all of this in parentheses, dx. And then integrating that, um, we'll get negative w naught x to the fourth over 24 plus c1x plus second constant c2. Okay, um, once we have that, uh, this, this is the equation of curvature without the constant solved. So what we're gonna do is anytime you're trying to find constants, we then employ the boundary conditions, okay? And then we're gonna just uh, move up here and I'm just gonna rotate the board a little bit. All right, so when it comes to the, boundary, uh, the first boundary conditions to obtain C1, we have Y prime at the point the hinge point is gonna be zero, okay? And that's due to the support, again, preventing the rotation um, at point B. Um, so essentially we'll have, okay, well, we'll just go back to here to equation, we'll call this equation two. Let's just label these. If we go back to equation two, just plug in zero for the slope. Okay, and then you get negative, plug L into X, negative um, omega naught L cubed over six plus C1. All right, and then C1 obviously ends up being the positive of that. So C1 is equal to omega naught L cubed over six. And then we also have the second boundary condition, which um, is Y at X equals L is zero displacement due to being pinned down. Okay, so we can take this original equation now um, and we'll get zero is equal to negative W naught X to the fourth over 24 um, plus W naught L cubed X over six plus C2. And then C2 ends up being, um, you should get negative W naught uh, L to the fourth and again, sorry, we need to plug L into the X's here. Okay. And then these become like terms, obviously. And then we get negative W naught L to the fourth over eight. All right. So now that we have our constants, we have our equation of the elastic curve equation of the elastic curve, all right? Um, which is going to become, let's just do the math here, EIY equals, just plugging things in, EIY equals negative um, omega, or W naught X to the fourth over 24 plus W naught L cubed x over 6 minus w naught l to the fourth over 8, plugging in those constants. All right, and then um, it just, just simplifying this out, I'm going to factor out um, omega, I'll just call it omega, omega over 24 times negative x to the fourth um, plus 4L cubed x minus 3L to the fourth. 
Now, once you have that, the maximum displacement um, for part two is when it's the absolute value of y when x is zero. Um, so essentially, at at that point in the in the hinge, if we go back here, we're just trying to find the maximum displacement. So we just plug zero into x essentially, um, and then we get eiy equals omega naught over 24 um, times negative 3L to the fourth, which is going to be equal to negative omega naught L to the fourth over eight. And, and, um, and then Y um, the absolute value of y will equal the absolute value of negative omega naught l to the fourth over eight times ei, which will yield a positive value. So that's the max, this is the max displacement and that should solve the, should end up solving your problem. Thank you.